So here we are out in the shop again. It's another snowy day here in uh, in New York, although it's supposed to snow in the Northeast, so uh, don't mind that. We're gonna take a look at the Ark of Shame on the drill press table. I tried a couple of different things to, uh, to attack this so far and haven't been happy with it, so let's see what we can do. But first we gotta clear out a little bit of space because I don't have any room to do anything. And it's snowing, so let's just put the tractor out in the driveway, make a little space to, uh, to do some work and see what we can get done. So here we are, back to the dreaded arc of shame. You can see in some of the earlier videos I'm gonna post, I tried JB Weld, and the JB Weld actually came out pretty good, except the color was just too far off, and I couldn't stand it. And I know I'm not restoring this, but I want it to look better than that. So today I ground out all of the JB Weld and we're gonna just try my MIG welder and see what happens. This thing is reasonably warm because it's been in the house. Uh, it's cold outside, uh, but I made a little bit of space here, which is good. I'll try to keep the, uh, keep the sparks off my BMW. And we're gonna hit this with the MIG welder and just see how it goes, so. I'm optimistic. I did see another video where a guy looks like he did the same thing, so let's see what happens. Worst comes to worst, I have to buy another table somewhere. All right, so here with the tractor out of the shop, and we have a little bit of room to actually do something. Normally, I would do this outside, or at a minimum, get my, get the modern bike out of the way, and I wouldn't have my son's car in here, so I have a lot more room in the summertime. For today, we're, for today, we're gonna make do. So let's get set up and see what we can get done here. I'm gonna try a couple of the smaller spots first and see how that goes. And then if it seems to be working okay, you know, couple on one side, couple on the other, let it cool off. Don't wanna get this cast iron too hot. So, so far so good. A little, it filled a little bit proud, which is hard to control. So I'm gonna just file this a little bit and see how it goes. All right, so taking a quick look at what I just did, I think that's gonna work. This one, I think I somehow missed the hole, but in any case, let's, uh, let's see if we can fill a few of these up. All right, so here we are after a couple of passes, taking it easy, and you know what? I think this is gonna work. It's a little bit tedious, but I like the results so far. All right, here we are after welding up all of those holes. This doesn't look too bad, however, Still got to take a little bit of this off. It's really all I should see is the outline of the hole. So how do I do that? These flap discs on my angle grinder. These are 40 grit. The deal is you got to replace them every once in a while. They don't last a long time doing this. These are from DeWalt. There's a new one, right? I can't even move my finger on a new one here. Piece of cake. So. We're gonna get a new one on the angle grinder and uh, clean this up. Sorry for the noise. I got the heater running out here, <laughs> trying my gloves. It was up on the roof a few minutes ago. And there's the motor. We're gonna take a shot at that next. So let's see what we can do with the table.
done a quick little tool switch here. Gonna run the Eastwood Contour SCT 60 grit. Gotta be careful I don't get ahead of myself in terms of making this thing look perfect. Here's the belt cover dump. All I did was clean it and clear it a couple of times. And if you look at it close, yeah, it's got a few bumps and bruises, not restored, but refurbished and will look perfect and in character with the rest of the machine when we get it up there. So really happy with the way this came out. I like the kind of vintage vibe on the badge there. It's gonna look great on the machine. So a little side note here, with the handle in, I went to put the thumb screw back in and was having a hard time getting the threads caught. Took a good look in there and ran a tap through it, 3 eighths, 24 threads an inch, and that seems fine. When I took a look at the actual thumb key, the threads were just messed up. So took out my tap and die set here, so the 3 8 inch, 24 inch die, and just recut those threads. Of course, every once in a while you have to use the tool to figure out what the, what the thread pitch is. And after doing so, it works like a charm. And so here's a first look at the motor. So I'm gonna be really careful with this pulley because they come apart really easily. The original owner had this attached. I don't even know what it is. I'm gonna take that off. The badge here is kind of shot. I am going to clean that and leave it alone. I'm gonna leave this alone if I possibly can. It's got what I thought was some hacked up switch box, but this is actually original. I have been unable to find the little plate that goes on top of that, so I might have to fabricate one. I'm not a big fan of how they have that grounded. I'm ultimately gonna change that. However, <laughs> reasonably well makes a little bit of noise so I'm gonna take this thing apart and see what makes it tick so in taking this thing apart these offset wrenches have really come in handy and I gotta tell you I feel like I was when I was a kid taking things apart because there's not a metric bolt on this thing anywhere and flashing back I can remember had a Honda XR75 as a kid had to take off the cylinder head. Completely botched that job, by the way. And didn't have any metric tools. In fact, I didn't know, and this is the 1970s now, I didn't know what a metric tool was. Couldn't figure out why the wrenches didn't fit. Now I know better. And I do need a 1974 XR75 for my collection if anyone's got one. So I am more than likely going to want to do something to clean this up. I'm not sure what. This is old cloth covered wire. 
the first thing I'm going to do is uh, take a couple of pictures and mark all of this so that when I put it back together I get it the right way. And here we have the unsophisticated way of marking it. So I just marked one terminal, take the two green wires, mark the other one, take the two other wires. This way when it goes back together I know what was where. So here's the first thing I noticed once I got that electrical box off of there is the original color of this motor is significantly different from the current color. So the question becomes, geez, how much of that is dirt and crap? And I'm guessing most of it is dirt and crap. And once we get it apart, how much of that is going to come off of there? Good question. So here we are inside the motor. It's obvious to me that I don't think anybody's ever been in here before. It looks like a 75-year-old electric motor. There's a large amount of dirt inside, a large amount of dust, and the most important thing I noticed right off the bat is that the bearings are shot. So they're clunky, they're notchy, you can feel it. So I'm gonna have to figure out where I can source a couple of new bearings. What I'm gonna do now is try to pull these off the shaft so that I can get the rest of this apart. So you gotta love when your bearing is so tight that it strips the threads on your cheapo bearing puller. This is actually a Craftsman made in the USA bearing puller. And I can tell you, I am less than thrilled with that. This part is going in the garbage. Hey, quick side note. The Craftsman bearing puller stripped. You notice I took the arms off of it, put them to the side. I threw the other piece away. When I took my import bearing puller and went to put it on here, the arms didn't reach. Put the arms on from the other one. Sometimes it makes sense to save things. I am gonna heat the crap out of this and see if it makes any difference. I had the torch on there for a minute. Sometimes a little bit of heat is all you need. Check out this capacitor. Aerovox, patent noticed enclosed. 107 to 120 microfarad. 110 volts made in the USA. Probably leaky, but seems to be working, but that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. This is encouraging. So this is where the motor box was. This was this color a couple of minutes ago. So I am going to guess that with a little patience and careful cleaning, this motor is gonna look like it did when it was new, or at least close to it got some work to do. I've got to figure out if this thing comes apart. If not, I got to take it outside and blow it out. So I think we're coming to the close for part three here. So for those of you keeping track, here we are at the moment. Got the table on. I'm really happy with that from a from a 10 foot perspective. It's perfect. I'll put a nice US made vise on there. We're on the pole. We've got our thumb screw in there now. Threads cut. Motor getting ready to go. Original patina all the way across. Yeah, a little bit of clear coating to protect it, but for the most part, this thing is starting to look exactly the way you would expect a nicely kept 70 year old machine.
So, more to come. Thanks, guys. Hopefully, part four is going to wrap this one up.